So uh, the topic is the pros and cons of each trading style. And uh, well, we know that every trader has a different approach to the market. And if we compare two similar traders, let's imagine that they are twins, for example, and they have a similar amount of uh, money available for trading. Even so, um, these two people with, well, likely mindsets will likely perform different actions and not only will they trade some different trade instruments but uh, they will also trade different time frames they will open and close their positions according to different uh, logic they will keep the positions open for different times so um, if we search really well in the whole world there won't be two traders who act in similar fashion. However, there are some common categories, so-called trading styles, which uh, can be distinguished among traders. And it is really very important to understand which trading style you have in order to get the best out of the market. So, which trading styles are there? Sometimes uh, people distinguish a bit more categories. Uh, today we'll have uh, here the four major ones. The trading style are scalping, day trading, which is uh, often referred to as intraday trading, swing trading and position trading. Um, all of these trading styles are distinguished mainly by the period during which you hold your position open. So if you scalp, you trade uh, probably for um, several minutes or so. If you day trade, you close your trade during the day you have opened it. Swing trading involves um, a bit different approach as it is more tied to what is happening at the market. But swing trades can be held for longer than one day. And position trading is uh, a longer term strategy and it may involve holding a trade open for days and months. However, um, despite the fact that we made this time distinction, that is not the only feature of uh, different trading styles. So let's uh, do a bigger comparison in order to understand everything properly. So uh, you can see that the first distinction is time to hold the position open. And that is what I have already explained a bit. So we can see here the details about each uh, trading style. As for time frames um, here, the story is kind of related to the period during which you hold your trade open because, uh, well, uh, we can't um, scalp, so trade within several minutes or seconds and um, do this on the weekly chart, for example, because that um, would uh, be rather difficult and, well, pointless because we won't see the moves of the market we need to see. So. Uh, naturally, uh, time frames are related to the uh, period of our position. And for scalping, we choose small time frames, the smallest um, available, something like one minute, five minute chart. And every time frame under, uh, 50, uh, under 30 minute chart will be good here. So uh, we remember that. Uh, good approach to trading is to uh, analyze several time frames multiple time frame analysis so called and in each trading style that is possible so if you scalp you can uh, use five and 30 minute chart for example for your analysis day trading involves uh, a range of different intraday time frames from 15 minute chart to four hour chart and for analysis uh, there you may also have a look at bigger time frames like daily and weekly 
So in trading, well, uh, here the situation is more or less flexible, but the main time frame, like the central one uh, here to mention, I think that it is four hours. Position trading is about longer term analysis. So uh, there, there is no real point in uh, diving into some very, very short term time frames because the price at short term time frames change really, really fast. So um, if you plan to hold a position open for a couple of weeks, well, um, that uh, change of levels on short term time frames won't do a big difference for you because you will uh, look at the bigger picture there. And uh, well, uh, the next thing we need to talk about also is kind of related to the time we hold our position open. It is the frequency of trading. Uh, imagine that you are a scalper and uh, you hold your trade open for, uh, well, several minutes. And um, you can imagine that the price won't make a big movement during that period of time. Uh, it doesn't depend which market it is, a forex market, a stock market, still um, the potential of the price to uh, move during that short period of time is kind of limited. As a result, uh, if you get profit, it will likely be rather small. Of course, um, in relation of time, you will spend, well, a small amount of time to get this profit. As a result, in order to have a decent amount of profit by the end of the day, for example, you will naturally uh, have to perform um, a number of these smaller trades. So uh, scalping is really about making multiple small trades um, and there is no real sense in making one or two trades like this. You scalp, you slice your bid, uh, from the market and uh, well um, the idea is that the majority of your trades in this approach is um, should be successful so uh, that the overall result of trading is positive um, that is the idea if you day trade you can um, relax a bit in terms of the frequency of your trading because each trade you have will last for a longer period of time. And um, as a result, the profit, potential profit in each trade will be bigger. So one to five trades a day is a perfectly normal amount of trading for an intraday or day trader. Swing trading here, um, that depends if you swing trade on but smaller time frames that can uh, be several trades a day, uh, but usually it's several trades a week if you analyze four hour chart and the swings of the price between highs and lows. We will uh, talk about the distinction between scalping and um, swing trading just um, on the next slide. In the meantime, I will say that position trading of course, is done rare, more rare than um, other types of trading we have here, because um, for one trade to conclude, to reach its take profit, it will take uh, days or weeks, as we have um, already identified. So um, naturally, um, you will have to assign a part of your deposit for that trade. And um, as long as this trade is open, you will kind of be limited in opening other trades probably. And well, um, from my experience, it is um, not that easy to have a lot of uh, good position trading ideas. So probably that would be, well, mm, not that frequent for you. 
Um, potential profit, actually, we have already discussed that. Here you can see in the table we have information uh, about, uh, well, potential gains in uh, pips. So something small for scalping and medium like 10 to 100 pips for day trading. Here the um, pips estimate um, are mainly for the currency market, but uh, you can kind of stretch that to the stock market and other markets as well, uh, depending on the most common um, size of uh, daily ranges. Count from that, and the analogy is, uh, I think, rather evident. So um, swing trading, here the potential profits are bigger than day trading because the market swings you trade uh, can last longer than one day, um, be created of several days of price growth or price decline, so that um, you can get more here, something up to 200 pips or maybe more for the currency market. For position trading, I won't even um, mention the sizes, but we are talking about hundreds of pips here. So, um, well, uh, it's kind of worth waiting for the price to reach uh, the take profit because this take profit is rather far away. And consequently, the amount of potential profit is rather big. Uh, what uh, do we have here? Uh, the necessary conditions for trading. Um, I have here the conditions for currency pairs, but once again, we can stretch that to other markets. So uh, for scalping, you will need um, some liquid instrument, uh, the price of which moves rather fast. So um, either it is a uh, popular currency pair like uh, a forex manager or a um, stock which is actively traded at the market and the stock of a large company. So um, something like this. Um, because uh, you will need the price to move during a limited period of time. So the assets should be actively traded, not some rare thing. For day trading, well, uh, that also stands. Uh, you will like to see some dynamics during the day. So um, something like the same condition applies. Um, if you do swing and position trading on Forex market, then you will would like to check the swap uh, rates because they become important on Forex when you hold your position open for, well, several days. Um, they become really important if you keep your trade open for more than two weeks. Uh, that sometimes is done by traders. So be mindful about that. And for position trading, of course, you would like to see the instruments which uh, tend to trade in trends more often than they do do so in the ranges. And that can be governed, I think, uh, from first thing, visual evidence, then you have a look at the chart. And uh, then from the fundamental analysis, then there are fundamental um, reasons for a trend, then uh, surely we would think about position trading. And um, if we speak about the situation in general, if uh, you are the kind of person who likes to think about this big fundamental trends and try to exploit them, then of course you will consider uh, position trading and keeping your trades open for a longer period of time. Stop losses, of course, um, also matter here, uh, and if we speak about scalping, well, um, a lot of people prefer not to use stop losses at all and to close their trades manually because, 
After all, they are present all the time, gazing at the charts and actively doing their job while they are uh, witnessing this scalping process. But uh, if um, choosing to make a stop loss, then it should be tight. For day trading, well, some normal stop loss, which is related to your trading system, which uh, is involved in a sensible risk reward ratio. Uh, well, the classic risk reward ratio is uh, one to three. Then your stop loss is three times smaller than your take profit. And then you also look at the chart in order to make your stop loss somehow related to the important technical levels you see on the chart. So some normal um, stop loss, which is related to your trading strategy, will be fine for day trading. Uh, for swing trading, um, stop losses will need to be bigger. They will need to be adjusted to the chart. Um, probably uh, the stop losses in swing trading will involve swing highs and lows because they are um, natural benchmarks for this kind of trading. Um, well, that is. And for position uh, trading, when uh, we trade for a considerable period of time, then we try to get the most out of a particular trend in the market. Well, big stop losses, bigger stop losses, because we wouldn't uh, like this stop loss to be hit by the increased volatility. And it would be good if uh, this stop loss trails after the price as it gets uh, in the direction of your trade, uh, because this will help you to lock in profit and to, uh, to limit uh, your risk at the same time so that uh, you will be able to um, let this trade run in autonomous fashion and to mind your business while it is happening. As I promised, um, some comments about scalping and uh, swing trading here. And um, when we scalp, we kind of try to, usually in most cases, we try to catch um, the movement of the price, for example, after it reversed from support, uh, we get into the trade, uh, slice the bit out of the market before the market tops. In uh, uh, swing trading, uh, here we can see that uh, we enter the market at some point and we try to get the swing of the market and we exit uh, the trade when we see that this swing is over. So after, for example, um, we entered a buy trade and we see that the price formed a high, we get a confirmation of that in line with the trade instruments we use. Uh, the high was formed. Well, it is a sign that the swing is done so we can take profit here. So um, we have here not only difference in terms of uh, terms of trade and so on, but um, some logic of uh, the price chart also applies. Let's now um, see which trading style is the best option for you. And here you will need to ask yourself um, questions. The main question is how much time you actually have for trading. And um, the second question is, uh, what is your um, attitude towards stress? Do Are you able to cope with higher amounts of stress or you want um, trading to be as calm as possible? Keep these questions in mind. We will uh, return to them in a couple of minutes. And um, in the meantime, I'd like to point out that uh, we can actually kind of uh, set this trading style in a row and classify them depending on the level of stress you feel and the time you need to plan a trade. Um, of course, this is a general idea and 
for some people, for some cases, that can be sometimes different. But mostly that uh, relation stands, I think. I have tried to make this scheme clear, and I hope it is, but um, still I'd like to clarify what I mean here. So, um, when you trade in the short term, when you scalp and keep your trades open for seconds or minutes, uh, you will feel a very intense emotions here because um, you will be exposed to these emotions trade after trade. The market will move really, really fast. Your trade may change from loss to profit fast. Uh, this result of your trading will appear really fast. If you have um, unsuccessful trade, it may stress you out and uh, kind of um, prevent you from feeling good in other trades you have. As a result, I think scalping is the most stressful of these trading styles. Uh, you can see my reasons behind this. Um, and well, this is it. Um, in at the other hand, on the other hand, uh, when you scalp, you kind of don't spend a lot of time to plan each tra trade because um, you will have to do a lot of trades and market analysis usually is more or less simple in this case aimed to be performed as fast as possible so the time for scalping here for analysis analysis of the market and planning a trade is the minimal when we go from scalping to position trading and as the period we hold a trade open increases uh, the intensity of um, emotions uh, is smaller at the lowest point for position trading uh, because, well, uh, when we open this big trade, we usually analyze the market for a considerable period of time. We uh, know that we won't uh, find out immediately what is the result of our trade. So it will happen in the distant future. We can do other things of our life while this trade is open. So it is more or less calm situation. However, to plan this bigger trade, of course, uh, you need to spend a considerable amount of time, more, much more time than for scalping. And it's natural, it's a bigger trade uh, for you need to catch a big movement of the market that is not easy. So naturally, you will have to spend more time. And day trading, swing trading are kind of in between on this scale um, of uh, emotional intensity and the time you need to plan each trade. So um, I hope that we clarified that. And now is the time uh, for you to answer questions for yourself. And of course, the idea is that you should do it as um, honestly as possible. So uh, there are four main questions here. And the first one, how much time do you have for trading? And um, despite the fact that um, if you scalp, you trade during a small period of time, you will need to make a lot of trades and um, assign, um, let's say, two hours a day for that kind of activity. So um, this is considered to be a lot of time. And well, if you have this time, you can consider scalping. If you have a little time, for example, you have only one evening in a week, to do your analysis, to open your positions, to see what is happening with uh, positions you have already opened, and so on, then um, it is a kind of uh, more sensible to consider longer term trading styles like position trading. 
Next question is how well do you deal with stress? We have discussed that and um, I hope that it is clear that if you are well um, in dealing with stress, if you like this um, dynamic markets and if um, you are cold headed, you can act uh, without too many emotions. Well, scalping, why not? Um, is a good option. If you don't like stress, if you feel un uncomfortable, and if um, trading uh, on very short term periods of time doesn't bring you pleasure and is kind of, uh, I don't know, torture for you, then you should, in no case, um, get yourself in this torture because, well, what is the point of spending time like this? Position trading or maybe swing trading, something which involves um, longer term trading is um, your choice in this case. So we can see how already these two questions give us some ideas about ourselves and um, our trading preferences. And if you combine answers in to the first two questions, you already have some idea what is the best option for you. Next thing, how much patience uh, you have. And this is actually really important. Um, a lot of traders I know, they are very impatient. They um, always hurry to enter the market and they want to see the result of their trading right now. They do not want to wait. Um, they see that the market price is moving and they expect to get some feedback from the market in no time. So if you are a person like this, well, uh, it will be a torture for you to do position trading or even swing trading. And in this case, you should uh, consider scalping, although try to uh, keep your impulses at bay, uh, to do market analysis, to stay disciplined in your trading in order to avoid the situation when your trading activity becomes chaotic, because that is um, not really good in um, any condition. Even if you um, kind of, if you are a fan of Bill Williams' chaos theory, that also doesn't mean that your actions should be chaotic. Um, do you like to analyze the market? Is also an important question. Um, well, in my opinion, you should develop your attraction to market analysis in any case. Uh, but, um, of course, in scalping, mm, there, is, um, there are fewer amounts of market analysis, definitely. Probably scalpers um, are focused on some simple trading system uh, in order to do things quickly, check for uh, setup, check for triggers of this trading strategy, and then act, act, act. So that um, there are a lot of trades. Position trading, of course, uh, you will, um, if you do position trading and swing trading, you will analyze the market from different points, uh, use various techniques, you will combine fundamental and technical analysis um, here, because uh, in position trading, definitely technical analysis um, wouldn't be able to satisfy your need of knowledge before you enter the market. So um, different kinds of analysis in great amounts. Uh, hello, position trading. This is it. So um, you can see that we covered main areas here, time, stress, um, patience, love to market analysis. I don't know, maybe there is something else um, you think which you think is important. You can uh, surely uh, share your opinion with me. It will be interesting. 
Uh, but well, these are the main things I guess we should um, we should pay attention to. So um, let's kind of summarize uh, what we learned today. Um, of course, there is no uh, strict necessity to pick uh, only one trading style because, well, I'm personally against any kind of limitations. Uh, so you can do and combine these trading styles in line with uh, the resources, resources you have, um, time resources in the first place, and well, emotional resources as well, your money resources also. Um, you can pick one or two trading styles. Um, of course, I think maybe it is not the wisest option to combine the whole four trading styles because it may overwhelm you. But if you are a really full-time trader, maybe that is possible as well. Well, I didn't try it, so and I do not have the desire to do all the things at the same time. I think that it is um, a good option to narrow down to one or two trading styles and to kind of um, use them as efficiently as possible. Make sure that trading style you have chosen does fit your personality. Don't uh, try to do something you don't like to do. And if you tried something, tried one trading style, you can switch to another in order to gain more experience and just to see um, whether it works in the reality for you or not. A question which is often asked, uh, which uh, trading style is better for beginners? And um, in my opinion, beginners uh, can start with intraday trading and swing trading. Um, that is, of course, a question uh, open for debate because a lot of people uh, are more have desire to do scalping. But um, if you ask my opinion, my personal opinion on the matter, and well, I'm, I've been a trader for nine years already, and uh, in my opinion, it is. Um, better not to start with scalping for beginners because um, you get this way you get into the vicious circle of rushing into trading and not analyzing not thinking much I think that when you only start to deal in financial markets of any kind you would like to um, feel the sense of what you are doing, to just uh, see the picture, to analyze more, to analyze the results of your trades. And uh, if you have this scalping trading, just one trade after another, well, you won't be able to draw a lot of conclusions there, probably. But, well, this is my observation, so um, you can decide whether to use it or not. For professionals, well, yes, um, professionals can do anything they want, of course, and they can do scalping, they can do position trading. Position trading, as you can understand, is um, harder than scalping in terms of market analysis, um, because, well, um, uh, we know that it is uh, a great deal difficult to forecast where the price will end up today. Uh, so, of course, it is harder to forecast what will happen um, in several weeks, not only for some unpredictable black swans events, but uh, just as the things we can predict happen, well, they are also sometimes hard to incorporate in the big picture. As for me, I usually um, do swing trading most of the time. Um, I find that this is a balanced solution between 
everything we have discussed today for me um, in terms of time I have for my analysis and trading and um, in terms of uh, levels of uh, stress uh, I can accept. So for me, it's kind of middle balanced option I like. But um, sometimes, of course, it um, happens um, when I make some longer term tra trades. And I can remember things when, well, um, I tried scalping, although I'm not a great fan of it. But mm, you see, I'm trying to do the Thing which uh, is uh, which works best for me. So this is it. Um, if you have questions, guys, related to the topic we have today, you are very welcome. In the meantime, um, I'd like to point out that there will be um, many more webinars at Tradimo related to uh, technical analysis, uh, education of how to work in financial markets. So you can check the webinar schedule at the website. Um, and uh, tomorrow, by the way, we will talk about technical indicators and whether traders should use them in trading or not. This is an interesting question. And uh, also, I should remind you that Tradimo offers a premium program for um, those who are subscribed. And uh, this premium program um, involves um, communication with uh, trainers and experts, which will uh, guide you through the four new ways of financial markets. So um, it is a great option for you to use uh, in order to become successful trader. So this is it. I hope that you liked the webinar we had today. And I will be very glad to see you at the next webinars with Tradimo. So I wish everyone all the best. And see you guys at the next webinars.